Welcome to Engineering is in our DNA, a podcast series where we talk about the next in engineering that is powering the future for businesses across the world. Quantum is one of the biggest disruptive technologies out there, and for good reason. It has the potential to solve business challenges with unprecedented speed and efficiency. But what does quantum computing entail? Artishman Majumda and Rohit Patel do a deep dive and take us through how this works. Hi everyone, this is Artishman. Hi everyone, this is Rohit. And uh, today we would be discussing the use of quantum computing to solve real world problems. Uh, Rohit, why don't you tell us a little bit about quantum computers and essentially how are they different from the computers that we use today? So uh, to answer this question, we require to answer two other relevant questions. The first one itself is what is computing? And the other one is how do we build computing systems? Computing is uh, nothing but basically making use of some sort of machine to solve problems. Now these problems can range from count, search, sort, plan, schedule, pattern recognition, among others. Now historically, the machine has taken the form of human computers, mechanical computing machines, and more recently, electronic computing machines. Now how do we build these systems? Building these systems requires one to use physics of real world systems for efficient methods of data representation and processing. Different methods of data representation and associated processing mechanisms can lead to different types of computers. For example, we can perform computations by storing and manipulating information in strands of DNA in a DNA based computing system. Similarly, chemical computers use a semi-solid chemical soup where data is represented and processed by varying concentrations of chemicals. To look at human brain even from the computational point of view, it represents a highly sophisticated computers where tasks such as image recognition, natural language processing, etc. are handled via evolutionary biological algorithms with unmatched performance. But the conventional workhorse of computing today is the binary electronic semiconductor based von Neumann computer. These computers are inherently part of our laptops, desktops, mobile phones, and even supercomputers handling mundane and complicated tasks day in and out with great results. DNA and classical uh, chemical computers described are a few of the unconventional systems being tested for their capabilities, ease of manufacturing, application areas, among others. Whereas quantum computing or quantum computers are one such unconventional form of computers which makes use of systems such as individual electrons, trapped ions, superconducting magnets, photons, neutral atom, among others, to store and manipulate information. Physics of these systems work on quantum mechanical phenomena, which allows in specific instances to build efficient algorithms with an exponential improvement in time and quality of results over the cl current classical processing systems. Though most of the unconventional systems today are being tested in labs, quantum computers, while conceptualized in 1980s essentially to simulate natural systems, are available in their early forms on public and private clouds. They are being tested by academia and business alike to solve real-world problems in areas of optimization, machine learning, cryptography, among others. Financial portfolio optimization, last mile route optimization, AI-driven object detection from images, new material design, drug discovery can be considered some prototypical use cases. Okay, Archie, so we looked at uh, what quantum computers are and uh, how are they different from the ones we use today. Why don't we delve deep into some of the industry use cases where these new computing systems can be applied? Sure, Rohit. Uh, thanks. So uh, this is like one of the uh, pertinent questions that uh, people keep asking, right? Where do we apply this? Like you highlighted a little while earlier, there mm -hmm. are applicabilities across multiple uh, different industries, right? So whether it's PFSI, logistics, medtech, manufacturing, chemical engineering, and there are a number of horizontal use cases as well, you know. Uh, like you mentioned, optimizations, AI, natural systems, cryptography, uh, and many more. So there are both near-term and long-term uh, use cases for quantum computing. And currently, quantum computing is being utilized in conjunction with classical computers, especially on a number of optimization problems. For example, traffic management, portfolio optimization, resource allocation, to name a few. And machine learning and quantum machine learning in particular is an area which is of growing importance for the uh, 
uh, for the users, right? Quantum key distribution algorithms and R&D across various enterprises, academia and startups together are creating a number of different algorithms which could be very safe as well. Eventually, quantum computer can deliver the promise of exponential cost and time benefits at certain, uh, for certain class of problems. Example, it will transform how we make use of simulation and contract design of large molecules. You see, classical supercomputers today can simulate small molecules, beyond which they would need exponential resources. Quantum computers, on the other hand, can simulate large biological macromolecules. Further, interaction of the drugs and the target molecules can be simulated very well with the quantum computers and reduce the time to market. Another example is quantum simulation. This can improve catalyst design and would enable energy savings for the existing production processes. Just to put it in context, right, the chemical industry currently spends approximately 800 billion USD annually on the production, half of which relies on catalyst. So a realistic even 5 to 10 percent efficiency gain would mean a gain of 20 to 40 billion USD right, in this sector alone. Further, quantum computing would be able to build novel materials which will transform areas such as defense, space, space exploration, and many others. So optimization, quantum machine learning, cryptography, they will further transform the fields of traditional uh, uh, machine learning and become very important when quantum computing hits technical maturity. Example in the wrong done, quantum machine learning can be applied in the automotive industry for autonomous driving as well as predictive maintenance in manufacturing. The technology could, for example, be applied to decrease the manufacturing process related costs and shorten the cycle times. The industry again spends about $500 billion annually on manufacturing costs alone. And again, realistically speaking, even 2 to 5% productivity gain create a $10 billion USD or $25 billion USD of value per year. But there are a number of challenges, right? And uh, Rohit, you may want to highlight a few of those challenges. Sure, Ajit. So I'll take uh, these two points one by one. First about how nascent is the quantum technology today? So uh, when we are looking at quantum computing today, there are two directions in which it is being pursued. First, certain companies are trying to build a fault tolerant large scale quantum computers. Basically, these are noise, noiseless or error corrected uh, multi-million qubits quantum computers, which will enable the grand vision of uh, quantum computing. The grand vision being uh, getting exponential benefits. These computers will be able to manage noise and allow one to run uh, the algorithms such as Shores, Grovers, and others at scale, which will impact our real world system today, such as security delivered by RSA based encryption, search problems that are applied in many areas of, say, simulation or database search. Uh, similarly, Quantum computers can be used to simulate natural systems. Uh, uh, that is their main use case for which they were envisioned for. This vision, though, given the publicly available information we have, could only be achieved in at least a decade, if not centuries. On the other hand, we are living in an era called NISC era, that is noisy intermediate scale quantum era in quantum computing. Now, this strand of thought is focusing on building useful quantum computers as put in one of the articles by Nature magazine. Though as of today, NISC era systems are capacity and performance constrained with issues relating to noise, interconnections, gate error rate, among others, companies like IBM, Google, Rigetti have a roadmap to build larger and robust uh, NISC era quantum computers. For example, IBM launched a 433 qubit machine this month, and they intend to build a 1000 plus qubit chip soon. In fact, in 2023, and a modular 4000 plus qubit machine by 2025. Now, once realized, such systems will surpass the capability of current classical computers to simulate the small quantum computers of today. Additionally, hybrid classical computing uh, classical quantum computing algorithms such as uh, variational quantum eigensolver and quantum approximate optimization algorithm built for NISCARA quantum computers will allow companies such as Emphasis and others an incentive to build real world useful quantum applications. Now on the adoption side, if you look at it, especially from the buyer side, things are a bit more complicated. 
First of all, understanding quantum computing is a challenging task and adopting a technology that is harder to understand today is not easy. Another issue that we see is availability and maturity of hardware and software stack, which hinders the ability to develop solutions at scale. In comparison to the classical tech stack that is available, current quantum computing hardware and software can at best help one to build prototypical applications. Further, availability of talent is a major issue. There is a paucity of resources who understand and apply quantum computing to a real world application. If you look at the talent market today, a kind of talent war has ensued around the world, given the growing quantum computing ecosystem. Now, next is if, say, you want to build a quantum uh, center of excellence within your organization. It is a complex, costly and time consuming process, and it is not easy to assess the ROI you will get given the uncertainty we have in quantum computing. And finally, today we are living in a world where deep tech is progressing rapidly and uh, research budgets are being pulled in multiple high tech alternatives other than quantum computing, such as AR, VR, blockchain, metaverse, uh, and hence uh, it is hindering the organization to put resources specifically in quantum computing. This conversation on quantum computing continues in part two of this podcast episode. Listen to the second and concluding episode of this podcast to learn more about how enterprises can leverage this technology and how Emphasis uses quantum for its clients.